All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today for Textile Word Buying. And uh, yeah, it's been a um, mm, slightly productive week. We've managed to set up a few things on the side, so let's take a look at that first then. So, didn't do a whole lot on the site this week, but one new thing of interest in there is the Black Friday tech guide I put together. And, um, yeah, basically it lets you, um, um, it's something that I, it's the same formula I use for back to school and essentially lets you know what kind of deal to expect and also take a temperature of the market. So right now, if we compare this year's deals compared to what the market was at the same point in time last year. Well, we've got this graph here. Uh, so basically the um, pale colors are the uh, our last year's uh, data and uh, the darker ones are this year and basically using the same color each time. Um, so yeah, at some point I'll probably revise the colors just to try to have something that is as um, readable uh, even for people with uh, color blindness or something like that. Must admit I mostly went with contrast on this one plus uh, the color palette I already have for the website so I'll need to do a little bit of a check there. And uh, yeah, there's definitely going to be a future improvement on this. But uh, in case you were wondering how this year's compares to last year in terms of uh, basically how many rebates are available and how generous they are, here's the data right here. Uh, so basically, uh, we had a better quantity of rebates last year or frequency if you prefer uh, but the average re generosity of the rebates were lower on average anyway uh, and uh, basically this graph lets you uh, see how things are evolving but one of the interesting things to note here is that well we did have an increase in rebates around Black Friday last year, uh, but um, basically deals were no better than, than they were for the rest of the year. A good thing to keep in mind. Uh, the uh, It was more generous still than what it was in the beginning of December. And basically you can uh, take a look at how the market went last year uh, up to and even uh, past the uh, Boxing Day sales. And uh, that way we can take, basically see what we're in for. Uh, and as you can see, the tendency last year was that uh, Black Friday had some at good quantity of rebates, but not the rebates themselves weren't that generous. So basically, makes shopping easier because you have more choices essentially. But the prices you would get were no better than um, a lot of other uh, parts of the year. However, when it really kicked off was the beginning of December, or at least in terms of uh, quantity. Um, but generosity, 15% there, 15% at Boxing Day. So basically as generous on average. Uh, and then drops in the weeks shortly preceding 
Christmas. And it kicks back up mostly in uh, quantity over ad boxing day as well. And it's not necessarily uh, an indication that deals, uh, they're not good deals to have on those dates, but on average, there are so many uh, middling to mediocre rebates to go around as well and make it a little bit harder to shop that uh, on average, you would not necessarily save that much by shopping on Black Friday or Boxing Day or anything like that. Uh, the easiest period to shop for uh, tech hardware, probably beginning of December, simply because of the quantity available there. Uh, September and even this year in July, July was surprisingly good for tech shopping as well. So uh, basically I like to put those graphs there to let people see how uh, things are evolving and not every year is like the last one. Uh, but still, it's an interesting indication of what we can expect when shopping for tech. And then I have a few um, common scenarios when shopping for different kind of devices. So computer, laptops, uh, a few gaming picks as well. So gaming desktop, gaming laptops, and the consoles as well. And all of that feeds off from whatever is uh, the current state of the market. So uh, it takes into consideration what rebates are currently going on right now uh, to make those recommendation and what the expected uh, what the life expectancy is there and basically you can um, shop from there uh, quite easily and uh, yes i did a few um i did point out as well a few things including uh basically my gaming expense calculator that uh, basically lets you know how much it costs yearly uh, to uh, play video games depending on which console you're on. And that includes the Switch, the, the Xbox, um, got different rating for the Xbox One X and the Xbox One S. Same thing with the PS4, with Slim and the Pro. And um, basically compare that to uh, gaming PCs and the uh, cost difference between um, desktop and a laptop in terms of how much those will cost you uh, in hardware yearly, considering what kind of life expectancy you can expect with those. Uh, and same thing with the iPad, even if you were to decide to play on mobile instead. So yeah, that was mostly what I did this week. Um, nice. Uh, so it was a pretty nice time to, uh, you know, just look at data I have collected and try to uh, turn it into something useful for my viewers. So if you're curious about that, you can check that on the blog. And I will make further uh, improvements to this uh, until um, basically Boxing Day and probably even on Boxing Day itself. I will definitely be displaying a list of uh, the best rebate of the, of the day on this page as well. A little bit like what is currently on the home page actually. So... Other things I did this week. I did a few updates. Uh, Thronebreaker, um, 
mostly cosmetic change I had to do on this one, but essentially it's a mix of an RPG with a deck building game, so if you like either of those game types, Thronebreaker is definitely worth looking into. Um, I uh, also kept going on my um, list of um, popular mobile games and try to uh, add that to the database as well. So that this one is the Carcassonne game which is available for Windows and Android. There is a different one made for iOS and macOS, which we'll see a little later. Uh, had it Soul Calibur 6, so if you're a fan of um, well, a fan of fighting games, this would be one of them. And uh, definitely the most recent last one we had before that was Dragon Ball Fighter Z, so uh, slightly different kind of combat in there and different strategies to employ a uh, little bit of a rough start because among other things some characters were removed from the launch game and uh, offered as dlc instead which has some balancing uh effects which are yeah it's it's really regrettable really so uh, yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, uh, there's one very iconic character, which you would need to buy the uh, play DLC, and that character was in the regular roster uh, roster for years. Forgot her name, but yeah, basically the uh, woman fighter with the rings, right? Uh, so yeah, you can play that one. Uh, added Mega Mega Aquarium to the list as well, and um, yeah, if you like uh, building simulator, business simulator, that sort of thing, it's uh, very approachable games, but with quite some depth to it as well. So uh, yeah, basically build your own aquarium. Uh, you know, the tourist attraction. The uh, so it's not strictly a roller coaster tycoon kind of game but you're building some kind of a theme park right uh some updates on youtube because among other things uh youtube finally got their app on the uh, nintendo switch so finally it's possible for uh switch users to watch videos on their tablet well their switch as well which uh takes a little bit of market away from other uh, tablets in my opinion the screen is not necessarily as good uh well I, at least when you use it in tablet mode um but definitely compares very well to uh, low-end tablets like the um, Amazon Kindle Fire HD, for instance. So, um, yeah, one more point for the Nintendo Switch. Rocket League made a few uh, updates in there, uh, tagged it and all of that, so it's easier to... Uh, find and categorize for you know in case someone's curious about well what is rocket league there's a few uh, there's a few people who don't know yet so uh i did add the information in there uh valkyria valkyria chronicles 4 so if you like uh, this I was always intrigued by this franchise, never played it myself. Uh, but yeah, interesting mix of chivalry and um, basically panzer warfare. So it takes place in the same era as the original Valkyria Chronicles, uh, but it's from the point of view of a different unit. So. Uh, war team japanese rpg for the fan of those so yeah very anime 
and uh, yeah, that mix of chivalry and uh, Panzer division kind of things and mixed uh, mixed arm strategy. So pretty interesting there. Exapunk is. Um, I'm pretty sure that's a roguelite and I didn't put it in the tags, I should. Uh, but basically it's a puzzle game. Uh, you have a deadly disease and every successful act you do um, give you an extra dose that lets you live to act another day, essentially. And uh, yeah, it looked like a very interesting puzzle game really uh fairly minimalistic stylized so a uh, little bit of a brain twister uh for people interested in that uh sid meyer civilization 5 just wanted to upgrade the um the entry for that game uh, definitely still gets attention every once in a while uh, thanks to Steam sales and a few things like that. Uh, it's not available for as many platforms as Civilization VI, uh, which have branched to tablets and mobile consoles as well. Uh, but this one is still strictly uh, Windows, Mac OS and Linux. So, uh, yeah, definitely plenty of reasons to go for Civ 5 still, uh, if not only the price right away. That's a pretty compelling reason. Uh, Grip Combat Racing. Remember playing, uh, what was it called, Roll Cage back in the day, which was available for the PlayStation 1, if I remember right. Remember having a lot of fun in that racing game back in the day. And again, I'm not usually the kind of person who have fun playing racing games, but this one was the exception. It's got that, uh, how would I say, physics defying quality that made things interesting with some combat elements in there. Uh, multiple paths you could take back before it was a very common feature and uh yeah sense of speed was really nice and this game seems to uh capture the spirit of roll cage very well for those of us that remember it and it's available for uh windows and all the popular game consoles as well and yeah, single player, multiplayer, uh, including online and couch multiplayer. So a pretty good game to play with friends. So Carcassonne here, as I was describing earlier, that is the version which is available only for iPads, iPhones and uh, Mac OS. So yeah, I'm not sure why Carcassonne went with different developers for each games which would do their own release on their own designated platforms but essentially that's how they did it um so yeah the sad side effects of that is that yeah basically your game on one platform you cannot carry it over to the other if you were to uh, switch environments but oh well that's a pretty common problem though uh, Doom, the 2016 edition, uh, did a little bit of a refresh on the iron tree there. So basically more details, more tags and more information, uh, especially if anyone is curious about what Doom 2016 is. Uh, Black is a very interesting abstract and atmospheric uh, and it's a puzzle game for mobile, and it's available on Android and iOS. So I um, added that in there since it's a fairly highly recommended mobile game. And on the hardware front, the uh, Pixel Tree line of phones came out from 
um, Google this week. And yeah, it's a slight update of uh, the Pixel 2. Not a huge change there. Uh, biggest change I've noticed was that while we no longer have a dual camera set up on those, those were a little bit uh, gimmicky anyway. Uh, so not necessarily, you know, we were not losing from having a single camera set up instead of a dual and um, yeah slightly stronger uh, new design philosophy uh, but not that much has changed the uh, uh, headphone jack is still gone the um, and we don't have a notch on the pixel tree uh, but there is a notch and a pretty big one too on the pixel tree XL uh, the Pixel 2 XL did not have a notch. So um, that's basically the main difference there. Still great ca great phones for the mobile photographer out there. Uh, very capable. The, the top reason, in my opinion, to get a Pixel rather than the other phones is that you get your phone updates straight from Google which means that those phones tends to tend to have a very long life expectancy compared to other phones um, because basically if you stick to your old smartphone for a long period of time what will eventually happen is that the manufacturer will uh, give up and stop send you uh, stop to send you um, security update for your smartphone and then all of a sudden you're walking around with a mobile uh privacy issues essentially so uh when you go with google well since everything's provided by google you still get all the security updates you do not have an extra player in the line of distribution of software updates that uh, basically prevents you from getting the updates you need in order to keep using your phone especially if you use the apps and all of that um so yeah pretty big deal there and it's uh, something that is um it's it's an issue on android uh manufacturers are responsible for basically they adapt android to their own hardware and that way they become responsible for it but if for some reason you buy a handset which you liked very much but did not sell very well and uh, that's my case <laughs> you will not notice that uh, shortly afterwards well you see updates coming up for the newer phone which did better but the uh, commercial failure that you bought no longer gets any updates for some reason right uh so uh yeah you don't have that issue with a google phone but you do get them with pretty much every single other manufacturer out there uh, to some degree but yeah if you like having the greatest latest software from google uh, that's definitely the way to go also added uh, this laptop i added yesterday uh, because it's always a little bit challenging to find a, uh, a gaming laptop around the one thousand dollar range uh, so i wanted to add another in there and um, doesn't bring anything new to the table really except that um, basically it's another option so whenever this thing gets a discount next well we'll know about it um but yeah otherwise same kind of design same kind of hardware than we already found in other laptops of similar price um and if we look at the market overall uh, let's see here 
So the average price of tech is still higher than last year by a little bit. Um, and yes, do ignore that short dip at the beginning of October. That was a change in my um, data sampling mostly. Uh, I had to remove a certain portion of my inventory on a temporary basis back then. So uh, as you saw, that got resolved rather quickly and we're back to normal. Uh, but yeah, uh, overall a little bit higher than last year, but we're mostly following the same curve. And when it comes to uh, frequency and generosity of rebates, a little bit like the same data we were looking at on um, the Black Friday page I was mentioning earlier. Um, so let's see, uh, we do have a higher percentage of a device enjoying some kind of rebate. But the generosity of the rebate itself is uh, pretty much at the same point still. Well, let's see. So we're on the ninth. If I look at the second. Um, yeah, we definitely had a drop compared to last week. But if we look uh, mid-November. Uh, it was a little bit less generous then. So, you know, pluses and minus. And the accessories I picked this week, I do have one inexpensive uh, mouse and keyboard combo. Uh, always useful to have on and and this model here is wired selling for roughly 22 bucks from walmart so uh definitely not an expensive buy there uh, but it still can make a huge difference especially if you spend hours working on let's say a laptop or uh, if you're not currently comfortable or your keyboard and or mouse bro broke and you want something new, right? So it's a inexpensive replacement for broken equipment or a minimal expense investment to make a laptop a lot more uh, ergonomic. Um, basically, you could just buy this, prop your laptop on a couple book to raise it at high level. And that way uh, you basically create a workplace that is very comfortable uh, with very little money invested. So yeah, if you have long sessions on a laptop, that's a great upgrade if you uh, are looking for just replacing bro a broken keyboard and mouse and maybe it's just gone gross and you don't want to clean every nook and cranny and replace it with something cheap. Well, here's my recommendation. And uh, since it's a wired solution, you will never have to worry about um, replacing batteries or maintaining a charge on those things. So even if you only use it once in a while, uh, it's not going to be an issue and uh, yeah. You won't have to wait or get replacement batteries to use it ever as well. Uh, but if you want something a little bit more, not sure to say substantial or premium here, uh, th this is an excellent mouse. Uh, that's the gaming mouse I use the most when I'm not using my trackball, basically going between the two depending what I'm doing and you know what kind of uh, what I feel like using that day. And yes, I know I'm weird, <laughs> uh, but yeah, essentially it's a fantastic gaming mouse with features which are extremely handy for every other use of the computer as well, including a wheel mouse, a uh, scroll wheel that you can use in either, uh, you know, the standard notched, notched uh, way, 
uh, or the uh, free scrolling way, which lets you go through web pages and Word documents and even long documents really, really fast and also includes lateral scrolling. And uh, not every gaming mouse have those features. Actually, it's relatively uh, uncommon simply because free scrolling and lateral scrolling are not that useful into in gaming usually. And um, usually they just don't include that feature and instead focus on uh, distinct notches when you scroll. So you know you definitely uh, switch to another weapon in an FPS, for instance, uh, and a solid middle mouse click that you definitely feel while the uh, side scrolling feature uh, basically add extra switches that you could confuse for something else. So basically it's a very featureful uh, a very featureful mouse and it's uh but it also works very well for work you can customize the weight on this thing it comes with a case of uh multiple weights you basically add as many as you like and you have different positions uh, on the bottom of the mouse uh, that allows you to place it exactly where you like for some reason, I'm not sure why, but I really like mine to have uh, all the weights installed in there. So basically you can make your mouse as heavy or light as you'd like. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, otherwise it's fairly standard. A few extra button, one sniping button that uh, increase the DPI on the sensor, which basically makes your move a mouse moves slower but more precisely uh, and basically you press that and then you're in precision mo ma mode and you release it then you go back to whichever mode you were in before so very useful for first-person shooters and the like um, comes with multiple programs so you can basically store different uh, settings for different games on this and uh, highly customizable you can program macros and all of that and um, even if you don't use any of those features like i mostly do uh, it's still a very good mouse and if you're into uh flight simulation is flight simulators or you know uh, i know le dangerous is a pretty popular game um and people uh, with people near me right now so uh a good set of joystick and throttle is a very highly recommended accessories for those and you can get this set here uh it's a pretty premium set uh this is this thing is a uh, pretty good build quality from what i hear and uh basically gives you a direct switches to lots of features so that uh, if you're playing flight simulators space flight simulators that any of those games uh it will come in handy fairly quick uh and i think a few people use that in mech warrior online and other uh robot or vehicle simulations as well so yeah and since this combo you can buy the flight stick plus the throttle bar from a single box you have a nice cost saving combo um yeah uh, basically it's a package deal that lets you save quite a bit of money and have something pretty good for 150 it's it's not uh it's not a lot considering the hardware in this set And um, for monitors this week, uh, this Full HD FPS, um, wow, sorry, disregard that. Mm. Okay, so what I meant to say is, uh, yeah, this uh, screen is a pretty interesting deal this week. As you can see, the price dropped 
quite significantly since last week. It's usually $200 and now it goes for around $150. Uh, it's available online and in stores from Staples, so easy to find. 24 inches is, an, is a nice size for a widescreen monitor. It's not ultra wide or anything like that, uh, but you have a very good quality full HD monitor, especially for this price. And uh, yeah, it's not the biggest, it's not the fastest, but it's a good all around monitor. Uh, and with IPS technology in there, you have great um, angles of view. So even if you're not sitting straight in front of your, com your computer, uh, you will still have pretty good colors and uh, brightness to uh, whatever you're looking at. Mm. And my smartphone picks this week. LG G6, uh, again, um, would be my pick, especially if you're looking for something that doesn't cost you a whole lot. Uh, but uh, performs pretty well. That thing had a pretty good camera for the time. Uh, definitely compared uh, relatively well to the uh, Pixel and Samsung handsets of the day uh, and uh, definitely the iPhones as well. And uh, it's available online from eBay and it's a refurbished model. So not everyone will be necessarily willing to go for that. But I, the reason why I'm still considering this is uh, when it comes from a very reputable eBay sellers, which is already in Canada. So you won't be paying some kind of hidden extras on this and you have free shipping and returns on this thing. So uh, essentially there are no more risks in buying this than buying something in person, in, sorry, in person in a store near you. And uh, that is the reason why I think it's a pretty solid choice, especially for that price. Uh, they are uh, certified to be 100% uh, functional with only minor scuffs and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, pretty solid option if you don't want to pay full price or um, it, it compares very well as well if you uh, to, uh, let's say, cheap options on smartphones. Um, essentially because this thing was the flagship of the day and not so long ago. Uh, so uh, when we look at the uh, compatibility list here, uh, you will see that this thing is uh, no pushover. It's capable of running most popular apps no problem. And uh, yes, you might see a one star rating every once in a while, uh, but quick touch on how the uh, rating system works for software compatibility. Basically a one star means that uh, you meet the uh, system requirements set by the developer. And sometimes that's the only uh, specs that a developer will supply. So on mobile, a one star rating means that it will run fine. It's not going to run slow or anything like that. Uh, it might take some time to switch to this app and then some more time to switch out of it. If you try to switch quickly between two apps, like if you're killing time during transit and then one second you're playing a game, the next you're answering a message in Facebook Messenger, for instance, or Snapchat, uh, then it might be a little tedious simply because of the time it's going to take uh, there. Uh, another thing that is worth noting that is that, yes, this thing can run Fortnite. The one thing of note, however, is that Epic is not distributing Fortnite on the Google Play Store. And um, 
there is a few speculation on considering why they would want to do something like that. But the unfortunate consequence of that move is that it's uh, in order to install this, you have to turn off a uh, secu uh, security feature on your phone, which basically would otherwise prevent you from running programs coming from other source than the official store. And um, when it's a matter of installing Fortnite, it's fine. It just makes it easier for certain kind of viruses and malware and all of that to get installed on your phone. So be aware of that. Uh, as long as you get stuff from the official store, um, sure, some apps have very bad um, permission requirements uh, that are very scary already, but nothing as bad as what can be done on a program that's not distributed on the platform. So, uh, yeah, it's something I'd be wary of unless you are uh, pretty savvy with uh, your smartphone and matters of security and all of that. Um, so otherwise, I would keep Fortnite off my Android smartphone or sadly go for an iOS device instead. Another option of interest is the Razer phone, which is still available at a pretty sharply discounted price from the Razer website itself. This is not the new Razer. This is last year's Razer. And um, that was a pretty interesting phone. Um, I really like the fact that it has uh, front facing speakers. So basically, you can have the best sound available when watching movies or playing games. The screen is has a high refresh rate on it, which is awesome for video games, but also useful for basically anything that is in motion. So even using the phone itself, uh, much smoother on this screen thanks to its high refresh rate. Uh, not necessarily the best. Uh, experience when uh, used outdoors because of the technology used for the smartphone uh, you're a bit more susceptible to glare and um, it's got good brightness from what I remember but um, uh, the uh, sunlight will compete uh, pretty heavily with this screen compared to uh, the OLED screens we find most other places um, but that was the pro basically the compromise they had to do to get a high refresh rate on this thing. OLEDs did not supply a 120 megahertz refresh rate back when this was done. I'm not even sure it's done yet, uh, but uh, wouldn't be surprised. So, uh, yeah, still... Uh, Sure, it's got a little bit of age on it, one year, almost. And uh, it's the first smartphone from Razer, so few little things uh, in there, but it's not that different from the new model. Uh, the one thing that everybody seemed to agree on concerning this phone was the uh, camera quality. Apparently, it's not too great. But by today's standards, I'm pretty sure the camera on this thing is workable. Don't I wouldn't necessarily expect the best quality out of it. Definitely not. But um, the thing is that even the worst camera by today's standards would rate fairly well compared to what we had maybe even three years ago. So keep that in mind, too. Uh, so, yeah, very solid contender, especially if you like to play games on your phone or if you watch, basically consume a lot of content. So basically, this thing makes an awesome portable video player, makes an excellent portable uh, jukebox. 
<laughs> to lack of a better term, but basically uh, to play your music when you go around with those front facing speakers, especially if you get a case or with a back step, yeah, back stand on it or something to help it stay up and point it in your direction. This thing will sound pretty damn good. So great for those scenarios if that's what a huge part of what you do on your phone. Uh, you should definitely take a look at the Razer, especially at its current price. And when when it comes to running games, this thing is built especially for the task. It makes almost everything else better as well. Keep that in mind. But um, it's a very solid container. It shines especially with games. Uh, same warning as I mentioned before with Fortnite. The way that game is distributed require you to disable some security feature. And I would advise against that unless you are uh, savvy enough with security to uh, basically be able to filter what you install from where and not fall for uh, the traps that are awaiting you out there. Uh, but yeah, two stars for Fortnite, best score you can expect on a mobile device. Um, simply because, yeah, no joystick, no uh, keyboard and mouse or anything like that. So uh, considering that the game is available on every platform under the sun, including PCs, well, smartphones are not quite to that level. So that's why it caps at two stars. But basically, uh, the action is going to be very fluid on this thing, no matter which game you play, uh, even if it's almost a year old at this point. Um, my current favorite, the OnePlus 6, is also still available in the market. Uh, that was the last OnePlus phone to still come with a headphone jack. So one thing to keep in mind, uh, battery autonomy here, I have one star, uh, which in this case basically means that it's, um, it compares it on a percentile system with every other smartphones out there. So there's, there are models with better battery life, but I think one star is a little harsh on this guy. Uh, it also has very good fast charging capability. Those things charge very fast. Uh, my wife's friend has the OnePlus 6. My wife has the uh, 5T. And so far, very pleased with uh, the OnePlus smartphone. And they deliver a lot of value for the price which is one reason I recommend them uh, pretty frequently. Uh, this model still has the um, fingerprint sensor at the back and the dual camera setup. So it's a very good, very powerful all around device uh, with a dual SIM tray, which comes in handy, especially for frequent travelers because that way you can save a little bit of money on roaming data. Uh, what you do essentially is you take the roaming plan from your supplier in regards to um, calls and texts so that people can still reach you at the same number. Uh, but when you land, you can also add a SIM card from a local supplier so uh, you can get data at the local rate instead of paying the roaming rate. So if you like to stay connected when you travel, the dual SIM feature can save you quite a lot of money. And uh, yeah, those phones you can only buy from OnePlus directly. It's the first time I see OnePlus uh, keeps uh, that they keep selling the older model after they release a new one and um, yeah the one difference between the one plus six and the one plus six t are not huge but i will cover that in more detail in a moment 
uh, in terms of what you can run on this thing as you see you have um, very good performances across the board um, this thing is very fast and plays even the mobile version of several really premium mobile uh, PC games on it as well a little bit like the Razer uh, you're not going to see a huge difference there uh, speakers probably not as good uh, camera definitely better however uh, and uh, you do have a no LED screen on this one so uh, screen should be easier to read in the Sun but yeah uh, overall pretty good all round you know a well-rounded solution for your mobile needs there but if you need want something a little with a few design improvements the one plus 60 as probably one of the sexiest innovation in smartphones right now which is a NIN screen fingerprint sensor so you can unlock your phone by uh, putting your finger on a spot in the screen no need for a dedicated fingerprint reading surface somewhere else and uh, so far the oneplus fingerprint reader is faster than the alternatives uh, that's at an in-screen reader so uh, definitely comparable to what it was back with the fingerprint reader at the back uh, other improvement is the notch you see at the top of the screen is much smaller but otherwise it's the same case and all of that one of the downsides of this model here is that uh, we lost the headphone jack on the plus side the battery got much bigger which is one of the reason why the battery autonomy is at four star now instead of what it used to be before otherwise we retain the dual sim feature that we had, that i described before same performance because the guts are essentially the same but yeah in screen fi fi fingerprint reader much smaller notch and um you do lose uh, the uh, headphone jack so if you have good quality pair of headphones and you don't want to give them up yet uh, you will need to use an adapter on this thing and sadly when the adapter is on you cannot charge it so uh, the f you know if you tend to have power and audio connected to your phone at the same time uh, very inconvenient for those cases um, people used to do that in cars quite a bit so um, yeah you're stuck with bluetooth and wireless headphone and or uh, the usb 3c adapter that comes with it uh, there's a few usb bc headphones existing on the market right now too so uh, still have a few options just depends uh, if you have good quality headphones from the past generation uh, might be a little you know switching to this one might be frustrating uh, but yeah overall uh, if you like uh, those feature which are pretty cutting edge by today's standards Samsung doesn't have in-screen fingerprint reading yet neither does Apple and uh, I hear great things about it so um, kudos to that one and it's only roughly $20 more than the OnePlus 6 so definitely worth considering as well especially if you like the idea of having the extra battery longevity in there um, or yeah just like the wow factor of having a fingerprint reader in your screen in terms of compatibility exact same thing as the one plus six uh, essentially no difference there
Okay, and my tablet selection this week. Nothing uh, too unusual in that regard yet. Um, the prices went down on this Galaxy Tab A10 inch, which um, makes this a very affordable portable reader for video and audio and um, quite a bit of games as well. That thing is not too underpowered compared to some of the other Galaxy Tabs out there. Um, and yeah, at this price, I, I'd say the price is right. That is uh, a great versatile tablet that for considering how little it costs, uh, lets you stay entertained and even uh, tackle some productivity task while you're on the move with pretty good battery life as well and full access to the uh, Android um the uh, google app play store so uh yeah you can run quite a few things on this uh the um most notable exception i see here is fortnite uh looks a little bit underpowered for that but you can play uh the Closest thing, which is player unknowns, unknowns Battleground, uh, the Android version should run pretty well on that. And unlike Fortnite, Player Unknown Battlegrounds is distributed through the official store instead of, you know, requiring you to disable some security feature in order to install it. Um, so a few pluses there, especially if you're not savvy enough or if you don't uh, trust whoever is going to use the tablet to be savvy enough to not uh, click and install bad program from bad sources. But considering that this is a tablet and not a smartphone, uh, the security risk could be a little lesser in some cases. But overall, yeah, pretty good for quick games and uh, watching videos and stuff like that, being online, social media and all, for a relatively low price point. However, if your gaming ambitions are a little bit uh, how would I say? If it's higher in your priority list and you want to play uh, games of, well, for the most part, I would agree that it's higher caliber, uh, the Nintendo Switch is definitely worth a look. Um, because yeah, you can use this thing docked or not and carry it around as a tablet. And uh, with the included Joy-Cons, well, uh, basically you already have the gaming accessories included for that price. While for an iPad or Android tablet, you would need to buy a separate controller that would be separate. I kind of like the idea of being able to have uh, the controllers attached to the side of the screen sounds convenient to me although i haven't seen that many people do that with their switch yet um, but the fact that you can already have all you need for that is pretty cool a um, little bit it's where the switch is also very interesting in my opinion is that that thing doesn't come with a camera doesn't come with a microphone if i remember right it's one of the things that is a little bit tricky for m online multiplayer games, actually. But um, it's a very interesting gaming device, especially for young ones, because you don't have all the uh, security concerns that you would have with online platforms, or at least not as much. Uh, a lot of mobile games won't work without some kind of internet connection available, either to supply you ads or verify an account, verify that your copy is legitimate, that, you know, that sort of thing. Which sometimes makes traditional tablets a little bit 
of a lesser option to play, let's say on road trip or while traveling or anything like that. A lot of games on the Switch will run 100% offline, no problem. Uh, the only cases where it will become an issue is essentially in games which are, you know, online multiplayer, then obviously you're not going to be able to play Fortnite during your road trip when you're in the middle of nowhere. Um, and if you do and you have access to internet through a smartphone or a public uh, a portable router uh, could cost you quite a bit of money <laughs> so uh, stick to single player when you're traveling for the most part would be my advice and as I mentioned earlier that thing is also able to play YouTube videos now because yay now we do have uh, a YouTube app on the Nintendo store so uh, that thing just became a lot more versatile without social media and all of that so you don't have to worry about privacy as much which is one of the reasons why I think this is a much better solution for younger children than let's say uh, iPad or Android tablet Obviously, you will pay a little more for the games, but you won't be dealing with a situation where the game asks you to pay now or wait half an hour to resume playing again. Uh, won't stop you to watch ads or click stuff or uh, get into all sorts of trouble and unforeseen expenses coming from a solicitation. So if you're... Um, so for kids, again, big plus there. Uh, and uh, yeah, basically you, it's a more traditional form of console gaming that you can carry around with you easily. So, uh, and the caliber of the games on uh, display are also quite different. Hey, quite different. Like we do have access to Doom 2016 on this. You won't on an iPad, for instance. Uh, there is a full version of Diablo 3 available on this, not the mobile version, which is online only. And, you know, a few things like that. Uh, Stardew Valley is coming for the iPad, uh, but I think that the pro having the joystick controllers on this are a different plus uh, the FIFA games the NBA NBA game the NHL games um, you can expect those to be available on the switch although I did notice the a definite delay in the release of sport titles on the platform this year so far at least um, but yeah very, very attractive mobile gaming device. Um, in my opinion, it's the best option out there. Even though it lacks some versatility, that is also a plus because basically it's by specializing in the kind of experience it gives you, uh, it in return it offers you some extra privacy and a better caliber of games which is always good. And back to very versatile option, the iPad, that is uh, the, uh, not the iPad Pro or anything like that, uh, but the standard iPad released at the beginning of the year. Uh, it's a very capable, very versatile device which enjoy access to the Apple App Store instead of going through um, the uh, Google version which doesn't necessarily have the same caliber of apps on it, although it's pretty close by this point. Um, a few things of note is that usually the price tags are a little higher on the iPad. On the other end is that sometimes games are available as uh, a free-to-play option on Android, but they are only pay a fee to play on the iOS App Store. 
So um, basically, uh, that removes a cost saving options that some people wouldn't basically would like to have. Um, but uh, at the same point, uh, you know, it's it kind of balance out in some other ways. Um, one thing to keep in mind with the iPad, and that does include other answer tablet like the iPad Pro, uh, I usually warn against accessorizing those things too much. For instance, if you only if you definitely want the nice keyboard cover to go along this thing, keep in mind it's $150. So if you add that to the price of your tablet and maybe you even want the um, official Apple pen to go along with it, that's another $150. You almost double the price of this thing only with accessories. So if the only way you see the iPad being useful to you is by including those expensive options right off the bat, um, I would definitely recommend taking a look at uh, similarly priced laptops and convertible laptops. In many cases, you will find something that is of better value anyway. Um, there's still a few cases where you uh, where the iPad is a good pick despite the costs and compared to similar similarly priced laptops, but uh, there's not a lot of them. So uh, before you uh, buy it right away with all the accessories, uh, just make sure you're not skipping on something better. Um, but yeah, uh, good news there is that you have access to Fortnite through the verified sources in this case, which means that you do not have to um, basically put a chink in the security of the device and you can play it without compromising security. Uh, so for Fortnite players, the iPad is definitely a better solution than on Android, in my opinion. Uh, otherwise, you have access to quite a few things of interest, um, which did release recently. Sid Meier is definitely one of them, although it's now available on the Switch too. But it sounds like the kind of game you could play on a touch interface very well, so I'm not worried about that. Um, Stardew Valley available on the Switch. I'm pretty sure it's not available on Android though, so it's one advantage the iPad has right now. And there's a few like that. Um, but otherwise it's very similar. But yeah, you there are quite a few advantages from being the market leader. Uh, part of that is the abundance of first, second, and third party accessories for the device. Uh, so uh, basically, if you like to bling your gadgets a lot, uh, the iPad is uh, one of the bl uh, the best option for tablets because you can accessorize those things like crazy. Just yeah, keep an eye on how much it's going to cost you and just to make sure that you're not going to regret investing all that much in just a tablet. And for laptops this week, uh, I start my list at a slightly higher price than usual with this 14 inch laptop from HP. Uh, currently, it's only available from Best Buy uh, online and in stores. And, um, you know, it's not going to impress with its performance, and its screen is a pretty low resolution. 
So uh, even most common video places you go, you will not see videos in their full detail. You will see a scaled down version of it. And it's, but it's fine for, you know, everyday tasks, you know, uh, even working Word, Excel and all of that. It will be pretty good at those sort of things. Uh, so social media, emails, uh, Skyping, and even working in Word and Excel. Uh, as you see, Word here, we have a three star, which means that we meet the uh, recommended specs from Microsoft in order to run that. Uh, only situation where you will run into issues there is, well, if you want to run, uh, have more than one document open at once because with that limited screen space you um, basically your workspace is a little bit more cramped you cannot fit as many things on that screen so as long as you stick to one thing at a time you will be fine uh, and um, basically very very ambitious documents so if you overloaded them with pictures or if you have very intense macros going on in there in excel documents especially and stuff like that uh, then maybe you would want more something more powerful but for most common needs for homework and stuff like that it's going to be fine it's going to be fine to go online uh, watch videos skype with the family all those things including a few games out there your creative options are a little bit limited but mm, a few are still open uh, but yeah overall if what you're looking for is the basics and that you're fine doing only one at a time uh, this is a pretty good option it's not the thinnest but it has a pretty good uh, battery endurance on it compared to other devices that uh, you know I usually recommend for that price point so uh, a slightly better travel companion than my usual recommendations there but if we invest a little bit more we definitely have a better uh, travel companion uh, it's quite capable too uh, we have a much faster hard drive on this one as well which you know it's not going to be much faster once everything is up and running but if you like to shut off your laptop when you're not using it or if um uh, you don't like to wait for things to start like starting word or excel and then you're twirling your thumbs for a little while and you'd like things to go faster then the solid state drive could help with that quite a bit uh, definitely helps a lot just to uh, boot the laptop initially so a uh, slightly faster uh, response time when you start something up but uh, you won't notice uh, speed difference in uh, the programs themselves necessarily uh, although it is a stronger laptop so for those reasons then you will have better performances as well uh, it's slightly smaller but with a much higher resolution screen uh, so you will be able to do more at once on it just keep in mind it's a small screen so uh, depends on your uh, ability to uh, see very small print on a small area but yeah uh, pretty sure it's thinner too let's check no it's actually a little bit more it's a little heavier <laughs> i was expecting this to be actually lighter and i'm pretty sure it's thinner no it's thicker <laughs> interesting that laptop likes to make me lie uh but basically you have one screen less on the screen and uh, yeah pretty fast components all across the board so a definite upgrade in there 
and we're looking at uh, 600 to 850 to 250 dollars more but this thing has a touch screen you can use it in tent mode like what is currently displayed here or tablet or laptop whichever is more convenient for you uh, touch screen is definitely a good feature if you tend to use a laptop um, you know standing somewhere around it instead of necessarily being sitting right in front of it so uh, basically watching recipes uh, listening to music videos that sort of thing better option there uh, the other thing is uh, it's quite a bit stronger so um, let's see what I have in there. We already have a start and a half of Fortnite, so it's going to be able, if you want to try Fortnite, or you already play Fortnite, uh, you definitely can on a laptop like this. You just won't have necessarily the best uh, graphical settings right off the bat, but at one and a half, it's definitely decent. Uh, if I compare there, yeah, similar for Fortnite and Premiere. Um, basically, you can edit your uh, family videos on this. It's going. This model is going to render videos much faster when you're done than the other one. But uh, still, I would mostly consider this as a video editing station uh, for you know home videos, simple stuff. Um, if you're looking at making short movies and stuff like that then maybe you would want to uh, invest a bit more uh, but we do have access to yeah Fortnite World of Warcraft most of the popular apps out there uh, so we already can have quite a bit uh, you just won't be able to pay play the uh, big name triple A's out there but still, quite a lot of fun to have even on a laptop of this caliber. And you have, you know, it's a more capable device right off the bat as well. So uh, overall, it's more capable in all of that. One thing to keep in mind with a device that is this thin is that uh, they have a slightly harder time keeping themselves cool. Which means that if you use a very demanding program like a game or something for video editing or something like that, it will tend to overeat a little bit easier. And you can help that a little bit by using stands, especially if the stand has good ventilation built into it. You don't necessarily need the fans or anything like that because those don't always help. Uh, but just by raising it and having good uh, air circulation around the laptop helps. So uh, yeah, don't edit videos or play video games uh, with the laptop snugged into a blanket or something like that. Uh, it's not going to uh, be a pleasant experience. Um, but yeah, otherwise very capable, especially if you only need the demanding stuff for short periods of time. If you need more sustained performance in demanding situations, uh, this laptop here is uh, pretty interesting. I actually had someone on the stream ask for uh, a laptop, a gaming laptop under on a, on a $1,000 budget and uh, it dropped in price quite a bit since then so um, good time to buy this laptop right now and uh, we're looking at similar spec as most gaming laptops in this price range so uh, definitely not a spectacular graphic chip in this laptop but still, it goes a long way to improve performance in 3D applications and games and uh, even creative software. So if you were graphics, video, video games, anything like that, uh, it's definitely better than anything I've listed so far. 
it's even relatively light for the price but it's definitely a bit thicker a bit larger as well uh so far as the first 15 inch laptop on the list uh for this weekend so um it's better for watching movies and better for enjoying video games as well and um yeah, overall for the price, it's pretty solid value and you could always look into upgrading it eventually. Let me look. Yeah, it's not renowned for its ease of upgrade though, so keep that in mind. But yeah, for under $900 in this case from Newegg, but I checked the listing and this thing doesn't have to go through custom or anything like that. It comes from Canada, so it's reputable, free returns, so there's basically no more risk of buying it there from eBay than buying it from a local store, which is why I consider this a good suggestion for this list. And... Um, yeah, we do get better performances almost across the board. Uh, I'm surprised to not see Fortnite on the list here. I'm really curious why. Yeah, I'll have to look into that after the stream sometime. Uh, but yeah, we're still at one star for Adobe Premiere. We do have a one star rating for AutoCAD. So if you're dealing with plans and stuff like that, especially if those plans have a 3D representation or anything like that, uh, you s it's a good system to start learning the platform on. Not necessarily uh, if you're already very versed or very advanced or you know, I have to deal with complex planning, uh, but it's a good laptop to at least get started with AutoCAD. Uh, when we look at stuff like Minecraft, Audacity, well, Audacity is not a very demanding application anyway, uh, but the extra space on the screen will definitely come in handy to basically have all those controls, all those tracks laid out at the same time. It will also go much faster to apply filters for sure. And we do have better ratings and stuff like Photoshop, Illustrator, and most video games. Uh, you do not have access to uh, a lot of AAA games yet. So, for instance, we have Sid Meier 5, but not Sid Meier 6 here. Uh, you do have access to Grip. Uh, and uh, let's see, what else? Valkyria Chronicles could be considered AAA as well, although it's not necessarily the most demanding one because it's turn-based combat from what I saw. So um, you do not have access to stuff like Doom, for instance, and I mean the 2016. Obviously, you can play the uh, the one from the 90s if you want. I do. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, if you're into uh, modern AAA games, this could be a little underpowered. So if we go one notch better, we do have this here, uh, which is mostly an upgrade on the uh, gaming front. We still have pretty severe limitation for creative software here uh, to go further than the last one because you would want more memory than this. Uh, but it's a very solid option for gaming for sure. And um, right now you can get that from Newegg or Amazon. Pretty much the same kind of deal. Uh, 
basically ease of action, access, good support. I require that from any online source in order to recommend them on the site, period. Uh, and um, <clears throat> as I said before, no improvements on the creative front yet, uh, but we definitely see big increases in video games like Battlefield 5 here uh, was not even an option before. Now we have one star. So if you'd like to play the uh, another Battle Royale game, <laughs> but this time with the Battlefield franchise, now it's available there. Uh, higher rating in grip, almost three stars, so almost recommended specs there. Uh, Stardew Valley, you can already play the game with lots of mods, which is pretty much what a five star rating means for a game, or that, or you can stream it if you want. Um, and so, yeah, much better performances across the board there. But if you want even more, and uh, it's, this will show especially on the creative side of things, uh, we have this uh, laptop here. So stronger, uh, it's stronger in most areas. It's not stronger on graphics, but it has better capacity for uh, co handling complex tasks. So we're starting uh, still not too heavy, but it's a relatively bulky laptop. We're still in the 15 inch range though. So carrying this around uh, daily is still a pretty sensible option. It's not the most portable one and uh, it's a little bit heavy, but uh, it's small enough and light enough that yeah, if you need one device that does everything, including gaming, uh, it's not a bad pick. And it's available from quite a few different places, online and offline, across the country. Uh, nothing super widespread. Uh, so we're talking Amazon, Com Canada's computer, Mike's computer shop, and Memory Express here. Uh, but um, I would recommend that you buy it from sources similar to that anyway. Uh, so let's look in there. So we finally have the three star rating for Premiere, five star rating in AutoCAD. So even if you have very complicated scenes in there, you can definitely handle. Well, we're not talking scenes in AutoCAD, right? <laughs> um, sorry. I was more of a treaty guy, <laughs> but more of the, on the artistic side of things. Um, but yeah, five star in most titles, two star and half in Doom 2016. So uh, we're starting to have pretty good experiences, even in uh, demanding triple A's with this laptop. Uh, and that's true for Fallout 76. It's the first laptop on the list to be able to tackle that. Uh, and uh, definitely better experience in Battlefield 5 as well with a two and a half star rating. So overall, very good performer there for, let me refresh my memory, $1,650 from uh, gaggle places. So yeah, pretty solid pick there. Uh, not a bad price. And if we were to go past this point in terms of performances in game, we would spend a lot of money. So that's pretty much where I usually stop when it comes to a gaming laptop. And let me check real quick. Uh, if I compare those two, we look at. So yeah, a $400 price difference. I wish it was a smaller uh, price difference, to be honest, because I feel this is a much better pick uh, simply for the versatility. 
Um, so let me check. Oh, well, so this one is Tinkerer friendly and uh, this one, as far as I know, is not too. So even advices like, well, you can take the lower priced model, but maybe even upgrade it eventually. <clears throat> it could be a little tough. So um, I think the extra investments worth it here uh, for most scenarios, gaming and especially for creative tasks. Um, but yeah, I understand it's a significant price difference. And now on the stationary computers front, uh, I start once again with this um, Asus Tower computer, nothing fancy, definitely not a strong contender. Uh, well, not. it's not going to impress with performance. That, this thing is not very strong, uh, but the thing that uh, stands out from its feature is that it's got a two terabyte hard drive in there. So even if you have a large collection of games or videos or music or anything like that, it will fit in there pretty well. Um, considering it's not a very strong one, maybe games was not the best experience because, well, a large collection of games if it, if they're older titles, they might play on this. Um, but yeah, not very strong computer there. Uh, we'll look into what it's capable to run in our well later. Uh, this is considered pretty old stock by this point. So the best place to get it right now is from Microbytes, which is a computer builder chain established mostly in the, the Montreal area in Quebec. And um, yeah, that's where I used to buy my computers back in the day. So pretty comfortable recommending them. But as far as I know, they only have this in their warehouse. So yeah, you would have to buy it online and get it shipped anyway. Uh, but still for $350, it's a very solid value. And uh, when it comes to what it's capable of, uh, you're fine for over 95% of scenarios involving Word and Excel and all of that, you have enough uh, power left over to uh, play music or videos and stuff like that while you do it as well. And um, there's a few game option there, but as I said earlier, uh, not very demanding one. So uh, World of Warcraft is not on the list, for instance, and a few things like that. But yeah, most common needs, uh, this thing will get you covered for a minimal investment right now even though it's not available from necessarily the most convenient place, but I think it's uh, not necessarily a terrible thing. It's Microbytes was a pretty good uh, place to buy a computer back in the day. It's been a while, but um, unless something terrible went on, um, this should be a pretty good place to get your gear anyway. Um, and um, let's see if we go for something that is more readily available uh, as you see I recommend this tower on a pretty regular basis there uh, just in the last 45 days or so I recommended that thing seven times <laughs> uh, so um, yeah pretty solid contender there uh, still not a very powerful laptop but with a little bit more uh, enough that you have some creativity um, 
You can experiment with creative task a little bit more with this. Uh, you will also see better performances in most programs. Uh, we're down to a one terabyte drive. So uh, if you have a gigantic collection somewhere that you do not want to store on a cloud storage, uh, this thing might be slightly less appealing, but uh, one terabyte is pretty much the maximum you see on a laptop anyway. So if we were to compare that to desktop laptop kind of scenario, uh, you're still pretty much at the top here. Um, in terms of what we can run, then we start seeing uh, the popular picks. So Fortnite is there, uh, one star in Premiere, no problem. Uh, World of Warcraft, one star. So yeah, um, definitely enough to play World of Warcraft. Um, mm -mm -mm. Same thing with Minecraft and popular games like that. Exapunks, which I mentioned earlier, is available there. So if you want uh, hacking teamed uh, puzzles to fix, it's there. And yeah, uh, let's me. Yep. So five star in Word, Excel, and all of that. So you are covered for any productivity scenario no matter how complicated and how demanding the task is uh, even if you're a huge expert in the microsoft office suite this thing will tackle anything so a uh, pretty good pick for that and it's only six hundred dollars while its usual price is more along the $770, um, no, sorry, $700 instead of $770. So uh, small drop in price, but if I'm willing to recommend it at regular price, I'm definitely willing to recommend it at a discount like this. Pretty good value for the price there. Uh, if we're looking at something around the $1,000 mark, but don't necessarily want to go for, um, you know, anything with a dedicated graphic um, solution in there, this is a pretty solid pick from um, the place where I prefer. I like to go most for desktop computers these days. It's uh, Memory Express, which is a very well established computer builder uh, slash retailer here in Western Canada. They're very well established in uh, Alberta, Saskatchewan, um, and BC, uh, and they're spreading slowly eastward from what I'm seeing and uh, yeah I have great experience with them and this is one of their recommended build and I really like recommended build uh, because basically even if you are not very familiar with computers or anything like that uh, don't know um, how they're built, what kind of hardware you want in there. Uh, basically, you have one that's already already well, already designed for you, and basically they build it to order, and um, you get a, the best of both worlds. Uh, if we compare to a factory built system and a custom build PCs. Um, so basically you get the hardware testing the factory build system get. Uh, but on top of that, you get standard devices uh, in a case that's easy to work in. Uh, the place is not very restricted in there. And um, basically since it's all built from standard parts, it's easy to upgrade afterwards and you do have uh, typically you have more ports in a custom build system than you do on a factory built one uh, because that's one of the way that uh, big uh, industrial builders like let's say Dell or HP or Apple 
save money uh, by basically reducing the number of options, which maybe in most cases you will never need anyway. Uh, but when you do have to open those things and uh, do a little bit of work in there, those options can sometimes save you a little bit of hassle or even a little bit of money in some cases. <clears throat> So that's why I like those uh, pre-designed computer, even though they're not pre-built. Um, so yeah, there was a little bit of delay the uh, ship across Canada, but one of the thing I like is that every single component they plan on using on this are listed. So I can tell you that they basically build their computers pretty close to how I would build mine. And if for any reason you would rather do business with someone local, nothing prevents you from printing this, uh, bringing it to your trusted computer builder and ask them if you, they have something similar they could recommend and they will have all the details. So in terms of what it's capable of, uh, we have a small bump over uh, the previous $700 HP desktop computer. It's in a slightly more compact uh, case as well. You could even place it under your monitor. Uh, I, have I maintain uh, a, few, a few dozen computer built from Memory Express with similar specs. And uh, yeah, that compact case is uh, pretty handy. It's a good balance between the amount of space inside, but it's space saving enough and doesn't have any ventilation at the top. So uh, you can basically put your computer monitor on top of it and make something very comfortable. A little retro <laughs> uh, used to be more common back in the day to have your computer underneath your monitor. Now it's usually on the side, <laughs> uh, but basically you can still do that with those system. And yeah, it's a good balance. The only situation where the small case could be um, a limiting factor would be if you plan to install a graphics card in there in the future, uh, you would need to get a low profile model, which are not as powerful usually. Uh, worst case scenario, you can always ask them to build your computer in a full size case if that's an upgrade you plan on doing. That's one of the benefits of getting it built to order. You can customize it a little bit more. Um, but yeah, overall, pretty good performances. Um, still definitely not a gaming program, but the thing is that computer is going to be easy to maintain and upgrade as your needs change and evolve and you know whatever happened maybe you get unlucky and something breaks in there it's fairly easy to get get it fixed and uh i have to say that uh, my experience with uh, the extended warranty at memory express was very good so far as well few places where I would recommend spending the extra money for uh, a guarantee. <laughs> so uh, that's saying a lot, I think. But let's say if we stay at the same builder, Memory Express again, uh, but look for a cost-efficient gaming PC, this would probably be what I would buy personally if I were to get myself um, a gaming computer um, if I were to buy one right now and uh, yeah just under $1,500 so we're more than $200 less than um, the uh, gaming laptop we're looking at and sure you would probably be adding a screen um, speakers keyboard and mouse if you do not already have them so uh, if you're starting from nothing, uh, cost is probably similar. But the performances are quite a bit better. 
uh, as we see here, uh, we um, have three stars in Premiere, which is what we add five star again. Uh, but we do exceed the recommended specs for Doom 2016 and uh, Fallout, Fallout 76. We were at one star and a half, if I remember right. And now we are at two stars and a half. Almost five star for grip, almost five stars for Battlefield 5. So that thing is not necessarily what I would identify as a stream. Uh, basically, if you're a streamer or you would like streaming video games, uh, especially uh, AAA games, this might not be a pick for that, but for most players, this is fine and uh with the street three star rating for adobe premiere you can already edit pretty impressive uh short movies with a thing like that so more than fine for a youtube channel well most of them uh and yeah basically the only thing that you couldn't do in there would be um <clears throat> super high res super long super complex scene uh, on a long movie so uh, you can be very very creative have a lot of fun with this device already as is and because as i said it's all standard stuff uh, it's easy to upgrade and adapt this computer to any kind of evolving needs you might have in the future and with gaming that means that yeah after three years you will probably want to change your video card and this thing it's a piece of cake you take the old one out you put the new one in um, basically put the same wires in the same spot roughly and usually that's it uh, Obviously, if you're not comfortable doing it yourself, it's easy to pay someone like Memory Express, for instance, to do it for you. Uh, but the thing is, it's as easy as it gets. It's one of the easiest upgrade you could do. On a laptop, it's impossible. It's soldered to the motherboard. And that's usually what limits the uh, gaming lifespan of a gaming laptop the most. Uh, that and the uh, a desktop setup, even if you don't think about it much, is going to be much more ergonomic as well. So uh, as we tend to play games for, you know, more than 15 or maybe even half an hour, uh, 15 minutes half an hour um, uh, it's um, definitely much better for you you will have a larger better screen to watch your games on uh, probably better keyboard and uh, you would all, most gamers I know would not play with a track pad anyway would use a mouse instead so uh, you're going to do that at a desk anyway so um yeah that would be where i would spend my money uh personally maybe try to spend less on the laptop but uh i would concentrate my budget where uh, my most demanding uh, activities take place which is what i do um uh, my I've got my gaming and streaming machine right here and my laptop personally is a Chromebook and I'm very happy with my Chromebook. <laughs> it's not for necessarily everybody, but uh, that's the solution I found for myself and I'm very, very happy with it. But yeah, very solid gaming option there. But if you want a little bit more, you want better performance even. Um, Every once in a while, um, rebates on a factory built system come along. And uh, this one is from Staples. I know that uh, Best Buy is also selling uh, a very similar 
system. It's an Asus as well. It's got the same spec and it's got the same price. So uh, basically you can pick whichever, but the one I recommended this week is uh, still the one from Staples. And uh, we do have a bump in both the uh, CPU and the graphics card in this case. Um, everything else stays relatively the same compared to uh, the previous custom build from Memory Express. Um, and as I said, sometimes in the computer like this, you might have a little bit, well, tiny bit fewer upgrade options than you would on a custom built system uh, when replacing the video card in three years as I mentioned before you might have to uh, look into is my power supply going to be able to do that probably but often um, uh, the big manufacturers try to skimp on those components as much as they can to reduce cost so um your pro uh, in terms of upgrading this and keeping that running for years to come you're probably going to be fine in over 80 85 percent of cases you have everything you need in there uh if you um if you'd like to do it yourself or maybe you don't know as much or you're just planning for the future, then getting something custom built might be a tiny bit better. But still, for the price, uh, I don't currently know of a custom built system with those specs, which would cost you an extra 100, maybe even $200 more to get the same specs. So definitely worth considering, considering that this is going to be more than fine for most people. And uh, yeah, we do have a significant power boost in here. Um, you remember most things were already at five stars on the previous system. Here we have five stars pretty much everywhere. The only exception is Premiere, which is pretty common uh you do not usually see more than that on a computer under the two thousand dollar mark uh, but essentially for 17 yes seventeen hundred dollars uh this is a very good value and um yeah this is strong enough that you could consider streaming quite seriously with this thing. Uh, it's um, It's got enough power left over to either load your program with um, lots of mods or uh, running at very fast frame rate. Uh, of course, it depends on a game to game basis. Um, the specs which are recommended are not always scaling in a linear way. They don't always, there's no set standard for what, how well a game should run at recommended specs. So every developers have their own idea on the topic. But overall, you're ex exceeding recommended specs. So, uh, high frame rate, uh, streaming capability, uh, modding capability, you get a lot of extra options in there thanks to those features. And um, yeah, for that reason, for most people, I wouldn't invest more money than this. And right now, uh, at $1,700, this is, an excellent value so yeah that would be my ultimate gaming pc right now and uh yeah if we wanted a laptop to reach those spec we would probably look at a device that is at least one thousand dollar more so twenty seven hundred dollars and uh maybe even more than that so you know 
the higher your um, ambitions are, the more it costs you, especially on laptop. It starts growing, and the cost starts going up exponentially uh, after a certain point. So, uh, yeah, that's the reason that usually gamers are better served with a desktop computer. It's uh, more ergonomic. Uh, you do have better lifespan on those. You can make them last quite a bit longer with a little bit of investment down the road. And, um, yeah, it's also at higher price point. Well, you get better performances as you see here and that longevity makes it much easier to recoup your investment over time so sometimes you can end up paying less over time on gaming on a system like this than even a gaming console which would cost almost a quarter of the price so um you know something to think about but that was it for this week thank you very much for joining me and i'll be seeing you guys next week bye bye